Hello everyone, this is Peter from Team Embarrassing Engineering again, bringing you a pre-event breakdown for my newest robot, Carbon 453. As the name suggests, this is the one pound version of my mid-cutter Carbon. It shares the same design philosophy as the beetle weight, having only one custom metal component, which is this bar right here, which is water jet cut titanium this time. And as you can see, I'm at a hotel again. In about two hours, I'll be competing at the Kilobots competition at the Calgary Maker Fair. As I mentioned before, this is a one pound ant weight. So although it may look like the beetle weight version, it has essentially no common components with it. It is much smaller in basically every dimension. This time, I actually did do the screws correctly, which means we can open it up and we can see the insides for the breakdown. Before I open the robot up, let's talk about some of the exterior features. So this has the same design as the beetle weight one, where it's two clamshells for the main chassis. So one on top and one on the bottom. The robot is fully invertible, as you can see. It would be able to drive on both sides. And it is held together with these self-tapping screws. The wheel guards is also held on with self-tapping screws. It is also structural, with one screw going to the top, one screw going to the bottom, so it helps hold the entire assembly together. Every single component here is all 3D printed, this time out of the correct material, which is a nylon, which will be much, much tougher than the ABS we were using for the other carbon. For the switch, you can see right here, this uses the Fingertech 3.5 millimeter jack, so when this is plugged in, the robot is switched off and you can charge the robot through here. And when it is unplugged with the battery in, it'll turn on. To hold the weapon to the top panel, you can see here is a big clamping collar that clamps onto the motor shaft. All right, let's open the robot up to see what is inside, starting with the weapon assembly. Here we go. As you can see, the only tools I needed to open up the robot was a screwdriver with the square tip to open up these screws and the screws on the wheel guards themselves and an Allen key to detach this clamping collar. So let's start talking about the robot, starting with the weapon assembly. So first, let's talk about the bar. This bar is Three millimeter grade five titanium. It's a very strong material, but also li lighter than steel for ant weight uses. It's pretty good. It would tends to dull a little bit more in beetle weights and higher, but in ant weights, grade five titanium is a good weapon material. Attaching it to the hub are six M1 size screws and nuts on the other side. And the weapon hub is custom 3D printed, this time out of a nylon, so it'll be much more durable than the one used on the 3-pounder. Inside is a Fingertech 4mm shaft motor, and it is attached using friction. The original plan was to use three of the mounting screws for propellers. However, I don't think that's required since there is um, connections from both sides. It's a mid-cutter, and also because there's a lot of friction between the Outrunner and the hub itself. So the motor itself is mounted in here to the top of the robot through this bearing. So this bearing right here, this attaches to the top panel and below it is mounted to the bottom panel using four M3 machine screws. The motor itself maintains its original bearings from Fingertech and it also has the original shaft design. I was originally planning to use a reverse shaft design and run a clamping collar to hold the shaft in. However, because of time constraints, I had to stick with the stock design, which means this is still held on with the stock C-clip from the bottom, which may be a little bit weaker. but. I think for the next iteration, I'm going to switch to a reverse shaft with a climbing collar. To power the weapon, 
you can see the weapon motors wires come out from the bottom and it runs down this wire channel. This is the only thing I haven't assembled yet. I have to solder these probably when I get to the event because I don't have a soldering iron at the hotel. But as you can see, the wires from the ESC and the wires from the motor, they fit neatly into this wire channel and run down the robot. And um, after that, we get to the electronics. So with the electronics, obviously you see here the 20 amp weapon ESC that drives the weapon and the two brushed drive ESCs. They drive the, the drive motors. And an interesting thing I tried to do with the wiring this time is use a solderless construction. So because I'm at a hotel and the robot was not assembled before coming here, um, I plan to use something that doesn't need a soldering iron. So here we have some bus bars from Finger Tech again. These hold, this one holds all of the positive and this one holds all of the negative side. That connects all of the ESCs together to the switch, which then connects to the battery. Over here is the receiver. You can see the weapon is in the throttle channel while the two drive is in the aileron and elevator channel so that we can use elevon mix to make the robot drive. As for the drive itself, the two motors we're using are FingerTech um, Silver Spark gear motors. The interesting thing about this is that they shipped them incorrectly. The, the company I bought this from, the uh, retailer I bought this from, shipped them incorrectly. One of them was a 22 to 1, one of them was a 33 to 1. However, I tried to integrate this into the design so I don't have to buy new motors. Because of the weapon's rotation, it generates a net torque from aerodynamic drag, which means when, the, when my weapon is spinning this way, the robot has a tendency to yaw this way. So to compensate for that, I actually mounted the slightly faster motor on this side and the slightly slower motor on this side. So with the um, robot being yawed by the weapon to this side, the uh, faster motor on this side will try to counteract it and hopefully make the robot drive a little bit straighter when spinning up. As for the wheels, I'm using Fingertex neoprene foam wheels and they're attached to the shaft using twist hubs. That about wraps it up for the breakdown of the robot. As you can see, it's very simple in design, very easy to manufacture and assemble, especially at a hotel situation. And yeah, I'll be heading off to the competition in about one hour. Thank you for watching.